Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to the May 6th uh, Kios Value Working Group meeting. Uh, please add yourself in the, the me uh, meeting notes and tell us how you're feeling or anything uh, you wanted to share. I've pasted the minutes in the chat, so feel free to add. Uh, okay. So while you're adding, the first thing on the agenda is uh, selection of working group chairs. I know we don't have a full quorum today, so should we defer it or I would say, or like anyone in the meeting is willing and we can add it. I think we can, we can either wait, um till we have a, a few more people. But yeah. I don't know if everyone understands the context around that or not. Yeah. If they've been in those conversations. I don't think so. So the okay. context was like, we need to have two person from the uh, each working group who represents the working group for any queries, contacts, or any other thing. Mm. So like it was decided that those two people will be the contact person or even the maintainer for the and response to all the communication and everything for that working group. So if one is not available, the other can respond. So that's what was decided in the journal meeting. So anyone wants to volunteer for that or any choices, any preferences? I mean, you could probably put your name down. But now uh, since I've, kind of I've been maintaining it, and I'm happy to continue that. Yeah, I'm, I'm spread a little thin these days to be able to be a chair. Perhaps next year. I also don't feel like I've, I've got enough um, experience with the group yet, but it's primarily just about not having the cycles. OK, that's fine. Or anyone else has any preference or anything? I'll back, I'll back you up if you want, uh, there, Rod. Okay, Thank you, number, Sean. Number two. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. I, I keep get I keep thinking this means a ten, and I have even though it's on the calendar for nine. <laughs> okay. It is uh, ten for me, so you're just. There you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Okay, so the next item on the agenda is uh, a academic focus group uh, feedback from CSV conference. So, uh, Stephen, if you can share your thoughts or. Yeah, so I dumped um, a link into the, in, under the what are the pain points for academic faculty, that link in the notes now. Um, the first half of this document is. Um, stuff that I distributed before the meeting group uh, for the birds of the feather group in case people wanted to look up at stuff to have a basis for conversation. Um, and then the other stuff below where it cleverly says notes um, is some of the main points that came up in the discussion. I mean, in, in general, there's there's interest and a need. There's kind of a more of um, I think I think everybody wants to see more, and nobody knows where to start, right? Okay. Everyone acknowledges the problem. Um, no one knows how to fix it, and so. But then again, it's. Well, it's a, a new problem for people who are doing software in these other areas, these other disciplines, you know, the mechanisms for open science, like Center for Open Science, have only really been gaining, gaining steam in the, the past seven or eight years or so. And it looks like, you know, it looks like in some places they're being really proactive on the need to be able to find other ways to do this stuff. There was also 
you know, if I can find it today, I just dumped it in a bunch of different Slack conversations. There's a really good piece going around on how the, um, the Journal for Open Science got started. And it's, sorry, Journal for Open, open Source Software. Um, I'm just going to copy that and drop that into the chat there. So I think I am. So I don't, do you guys know about this journal at all? Journal of Open Source, yes. So this, this talks about their formation and how they, what they publish is essentially pointers to the software with short, like abstract, gets published our abstracts mm -hmm. about the software and then links to the software itself. And they, they peer review all of the stuff around the software. They don't dive deep into the code to peer review it, but they peer review all the artifacts around it, like the documentation and stuff. They have the metrics and analytics piece. I don't know what is in that. Uh, yeah, but things that got, got call, called out in the discussion are, you know, the challenges of, you get some points sometimes for making a thing, but not for <laughs> maintaining it or extending it or any of those things. It's hard to get recognition for that. Um, yeah, the publication of an R package being half a publication was um, a topic of much discussion in the you know ten to fifteen people who rolled in and out of the discussion over the hour. Um, Stephen, I'm curious. Do so um, at at this um, this birds of a feather. Were there any uh, people at the university that actually make those decisions? No. Okay. The, the people who make those decisions, I mean, at least running from an example of one, which is my university, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not, we don't do anything innovative, right? Is it the university policy level? There's a university policy that says um, there should be a, a reasonable and defendable process for giving people tenure and promotion and the colleges will decide what that is based on their own stuff, right? Then, so each college picks its metric and the, you know, the, the default is you have to have X number of publications or presentations in this short list of publications and conferences because they're the leading ones, right? That is the, the lazy metric that mostly gets used. Um, and then those will vary place to place. And then in our case, within my own academic unit, since there are no really um, top tier journals or top tier academic conferences, about video games, right? Usually a lot of the stuff is industrial versus academic conferences or they, the things that people publish in aren't, you know, they aren't at the level of journal nature, right? So, you know, you can't uh. point to them. And so we had to, working in conversations with our former provost and former dean over the better part of a year, we came up with essentially a writer that travels with our faculty when they go to tenure and promotion that says, you know, we don't do this stuff, right? The stuff we do is different than standard computer science. And here the, here is how, here's the places we get our stuff published or our conferences and how, here's how we judge impact and, you know, Yes, this conference is an industry conference, but its acceptance rate is about 20% of what gets submitted. It's that kind of stuff, right? And so 
you know, I, I threw a bunch of these things in here at the top is including our metric. Um, people looked at it. I couldn't get a lot of discussion drilled down on that because everybody was still very high level in terms of what their concerns were. I mean, the fact that some people were trying to do things, right, was, was of interest. Um, I only found out about that number two under quick reads, the Association for Psychological Sciences. Um, in some of their journals, unless you've published your research plan and unless you've published your peer-reviewed research plan and peer-reviewed preprints, you can't get into the journals. And they have this whole badging system around how open is your thing. Um, that was new to me. Um, the MLA thing I've known about for a long time. The Leiden thing was was new to me when I was starting to look around for stuff. And the GitHub article is kind of a new thing to me as well that just I was just aware of as I started trying to nail this stuff down for myself. Um, so at that policy level, right, since the university won't dictate policy, what I'll end up having to do, I think, in our case at RIT is publish these kinds of um, guidelines like we have in, in three and four, looking at a, at a bunch of these things that are listed in the quick reads and other things I can find. I think the best I'll be able to do is to get, to have my group publish our own best practices and guidelines for either promoting your work or evaluating other people's work if you're on the committee and then trot it around to various institutional committees on campus who can give it a kind of good housekeeping seal of approval. But they think it's a good thing for faculty to look at and committees to look at as this process moves. And I think last time I, I pointed to these larger kind of faculty work capturing systems that RIT was looking at and hopefully we'll be able to use our um, our instances of the chaos software and the BOSF software to kind of funnel into that larger promotion system if the university is going to hop on to getting one of those. So what I'm getting a signal is like uh, we should have more metrics that can in future funnel to that process. Sounds like a plan to me. Yep. Okay. So then uh, I would say it's the best time we have one metric. We can uh, work on it a little bit and define it. Uh, what are your thoughts or any other suggestions? We can work on this uh, RPT metric, which we have developed. I think I think what we've got is a, is a good first step. Right. Okay. Trying to, to shape that and then figure out where it goes. You know, there was there was some concern overall um, in terms of making sure that we're just that the university is becoming the, the university writ large, right, is becoming too metrics driven, that there's not a lot of contextual evaluation being done. Um, Which, which is, I'm sure, an opportunity for academia debate over the next 15 years. Right. Oh, so at the, the same the last time, 15 there, years. There, there, there could at least be some, you know, some metrics that have some public input, right? Yeah. I mean, there have been these alt metrics for well over 15 years. That's like, <clears throat> at least in the um, information science community. And and I don't I don't know that the alt metrics ever really even thought about artifacts other than journals at the beginning. Yeah, I mean, what I remember, I did some reading on alt metrics a couple months back, and you know, a lot of it was about things that people wanted to use as metrics. Other people were worried about being gamed. Mm -hmm. 
too easily. Well, being yeah. gamed is always an issue. Yeah, there's a... I mean, anything that... But people game the metrics they have now. Let's not kid ourselves. Right. Well, that's been my argument. I mean, there's, there's a couple <laughs> of platforms like this. I don't remember the story, but the story around that particular one. I think there's this other one. I'm going to add some of these links as as uh, references in the metric, if that's okay. Sure, please. I think these are really helpful. I have already added them. Uh... <laughs> Steve and I, you're. 10 steps ahead of me already. <laughs> so. yeah. Here's another one. You know, these larger systems that some universities a bit good. I mean, so some universities use a bit. Um, Got to find the links to the ones that I, I believe RIT is using or is looking at using. I think I did I send these last time. Yes, watermarking was in the last meeting, I yeah. remember. Yeah, this is the first one is fairly informative and the second one is fairly opaque. Yep. Yeah. Uh, watermark was a little more confusing than the digital science one. So, uh, so maybe I would propose then we should uh, go to this RPT metric and uh, start working on it. So if you all can go to this metric and share your, uh, or any other suggestions. Um, can you share your screen, Renad? Yes. Or is it in the chat? I've always had it. Oh, there we go. I, I, I always have trouble it. like knowing what people mean, if they mean the document or the chat or, okay. <laughs> or somewhere else on their screen. It's not you. It's, 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 a, it's like there's so many yeah. channels. And usually I've got a Slack channel with a group as well. So I lose. When anyone says that document, I get <clears throat> okay, okay. which document. I feel your pain. <laughs> so are you? I'm there at... now. I got it now. Okay. I, I found chat. Okay. Yeah. For I, I think I just need to make all my meetings like on top by default. Well, that didn't have the effect that I effect expected. Okay. So, are you able to look at the screen? I, I do see it now. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, because when I share, the entire setup gets messed up. So. Yeah, and you can un <laughs> you can unshare it because now I know what you're referring to. Although it's, sometimes I think it's helpful for people okay. watching the video. Okay. Yep. Stephen, uh, when it comes to the open source piece too, I think recognizing software as an asset to consider in a tenure and promotion case is a problem that extends beyond the scope of open source. Yep. I know um, I spent about seven years of my career doing research on video games for learning. And 
there was a lot of software developed. It was quite expensive, and but we kept the PI, um, who is a formal Apple person with a lot of accomplishments behind him, really preferred to keep things closed because he would always go to the university's com commercialization office. Um, and he's, we've had a couple of games that have actually gone to commercial distribution that, you know, I get $11 a year or something for, but it's the same problem. It's, it's how to re getting that recognized is to, is the same problem as getting open source recognized. And so I don't, I guess this is an open source group, but do, is this a metric that we think could be useful to contemplate beyond an open source context. In other words, does this aid the larger question of reappointment, tenure and promotion in an academic environment in a larger scope? And do we care about that larger scope? Yeah, so I, I think that, you know, Saeed Chowdhury over at Hopkins who runs mm -hmm. the, the nascent OSPO at Hopkins. You know, he's talking about trying to do some work on software as scholarly output. Yes. Um, despite the fact that he's head of the open source office, I've asked him for pointers a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I haven't heard back from him yet. Uh, so. I mean, so I guess I, I guess the only thing I would say is it if for this one, maybe we consider that there's a scope beyond um, or maybe maybe I'll just, I'll just type this something in the description Here we go. Here's something useful. Do you all want to pause this recording while we're while we're reading? <laughs> I mean, I, I think as long as the, can everybody read? As long as the screen share is active. Um, okay. In this case, I don't know. People can people know how to run podcasts at like three times speed now. Yeah. That's what all my students do. They're just like, how do I speed up Zoom? Play it at one and a half times. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Damon, I heard the same pattern twice. That must be important. He said it twice. <laughs> Do you all think this RPT metric relates to our project popularity metric? Well, mm. academics would never dare to suggest that this had anything to do with popularity. No. Grass, okay. of course. I mean, <laughs> it's an obvious <laughs> pretense that we choose to completely pretend doesn't exist. It's part of okay. the magic of the academy. <laughs> Got you. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Because it seems like there's a lot of overlapping things here is the only reason that I brought that up. When you say, can you give us some specifics? Because I haven't gotten yeah, that far. Yeah, like, oh, um, OK. I'm, I'm just looking at the project popularity metrics and looking at the RPT metric. I was not looking at that article at that moment.
And when I was looking at um, the alt metrics, it yeah. looks like a lot of it is around attention and bringing attention to your university and attention to your project. And that also speaks to the project popularity. Yeah, no, I, I believe me when it comes to attention, that's valued because it's related to funding. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's about impact, showing your research impact, impact, impact the, and translation. Impact is the academic word for shareholder value. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm going to drop it in here. Y'all can look at it and decide if it fits or not. So how do we define the translation? Translation, do you mean language translation or translation between uh, the, the academic value system and what they measure and the open source? Yes. So I think, so the way, the way I, I guess I'm thinking of this as open source software is one family of artifacts. I think, um, tape, you know, tipping our hat to the altmetrics community that looks at both open source and proprietary software as academic contribution doesn't hurt our case. I think, you know, I guess I think maybe we just be clear that we are developing metrics for open source software, health and sustainability. However, I also know that I have 14 private GitHub repositories that that Games for Learning system lives in. And, you know, we license them as open source in case that ever happened. And we would use the same metrics to evaluate the health and sustainability of our software. So if I ran Augur over those, I would get a sense of which ones were actively being maintained and which ones weren't. And there's this the lead author being my former dean, surprisingly enough. Really? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly oh, biomed. Not my, not my former dean, a similarly named person from Australia. Well, yeah, there's a, 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 a gentleman at uh, Stanford named Jeffrey Ullman who won a, a Turing Prize in computer science. And when I saw the headline, and but he's also uh, very racist. Ouch. And I saw the headline across my desk and I'm, I have a colleague in my computer science department whose name is Jeffrey Ullman but it's not that Jeffrey Ullman. <laughs> so I, I emailed our PR people and I say, I said, if people don't read the Stanford part, if they just see the headline, you might wanna be ready for that. I don't know what triggered that thought. No. So I know ahead, Kevin. Oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I know I'm late to the game here, uh, but I, I don't. I don't understand the uh, I don't understand the, how the name of this uh, metric relates to what we're measuring. So are we are we measuring the reappointment, the tenure, and the promotion? Uh, I, I think we're trying to measure the impact and translation of research so that it can be applied to research tenure and promotion. Reappointment. Okay. So isn't this just impact factor? Maybe it's um, academic impact factor or impact factor is an academic term, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Could be if we're if it's if it's software we're looking at, I suppose it, it would be we could we could be specific and say software impact factor. So impact factor is usually applied to uh, papers, right? Studies. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but I, I do know one of the one of the 
potential metrics we have in our list is actually impact factor. So we have in that list is is impact has impact factor been started off like this or is it just like it has a, not it, it has not it, even, has it hasn't not. been started okay so then maybe we just rename it yeah i, I think this is impact factor that we're working on uh and then the the reappointment tenure and promotion bit i think fits down in the description or the objective probably more so the objective probably And maybe that's maybe that's just a short paragraph saying that the the impact factor is an important metric for for academics because it helps them because uh, it can help them. Well, we we would like it to help them get tenure. Uh, it doesn't now, I suppose, uh, for software anyway. And that's that's all I had. Sorry, I'll be quiet now. No, it's all very helpful. We could call it RTP impact factor. RTP impact factor. Best of both worlds. Is RPP. Uh, uh, RTP impact factor know, I know feels it. like, uh, know, like you are measuring promotion. the impact yeah. of being tenured. No, no, I know R R P RTP is. I didn't know what RPP was. Oh, did I say RPP? I heard RPP, Kevin, but sometimes I hear what I want to hear. At least they're not <laughs> RPGs. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of which, in my other life as a game professor, the Strong Museum is currently announcing its uh, annual inductees for the World Video Game Hall of Fame, for those of you with an interest in that. Area. I visited the um, a Hall of a Video Game Museum in um, Tempere, Finland, a number of years ago. That was one of the coolest museums I've ever been in. Yeah, they, um, they, I, I know a couple of people who are on the board of that. They just opened it up. Um, should you ever make it to Rochester? Um, you can get a behind the scenes tour of the strong via me. The what? Uh, get a uh, behind the scenes tour of the, uh, the strong National Museum of Play, the largest entity in collections of board games, toys, dolls, video games, really? blah, 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 in the world. Yeah, I lived in Buffalo for a time and I've, I've visited Rochester. It was in the, you know, waning days of Kodak. And <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I actually have a colleague um, who's at RIT. Um, Liz Lolly, do you know her? Uh, I was Liz's mentor when oh. she came on full time. I, I know Liz. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, no, it's... I mean, we're not close friends, but we're Facebook friends. We've met at a conference or two. 
And then do you know Remy de Cosmaker? Remy worked for me for five years. Yeah. Yeah. He's I like Remy a lot. Remy is the best. He is he is one of the most he it's like if I want to know what's next, I go talk to Remy. Yep. <laughs> yep. We also know uh, Justin Flory. He was at RIT, I believe. Justin's one of my former students as well. Justin is no longer at RIT. He took the work that yeah. we've been doing for um, UNICEF under contract. And um, then when he graduated, they hired him to do it full time. So. Yeah, I, I keep them both actively involved on my advisory boards and, and all that other stuff um, to help make sure that I'm not doing the right thing as far as the OSPO does. And Mike Nolan graduated about the same, a couple of years before Justin Flory, but is in the same group. And so he's working for me full time now. So the question is, how are we? Is our goal here to measure impact at a for an from? Is this is this principally an academic measure, an alt metric in an academic context? I'm, you know, in terms of of trying to start bringing academia into the fold, I think yeah. I mean, it might be that there's a a special. So, so there's two different kinds of ways I can see this thing working, right? One is academic impact. I mean, at the chaos level, we're looking at open source software, but as Sean said, there's impact for software as research in general. And there's also the potential for having similar stuff around open data and OERs and the open science stuff, which gets mm -hmm. tracked by OSF, but not quite in this context, right? right? One of the reasons why we wanted to bring the OSF stuff, start playing, importing into the grimoire instance we have to start seeing how we can bring both of those together to try to start getting more data than just sheer numbers on, on the open science stuff. Um, so there's probably overlaps between maybe there's a, a non-academic impact factor and an academic impact factor, and maybe some of the other metrics that we already have, like popularity, are in essence the non-academic impact factor. Yeah. So this is going to be a, uh, uh, this is not an atomic metric, right? So this is a collection of metrics that will make up impact factor and is there is there a way of calculating this currently an so actual, an impact factor number yeah um so there's this horrible thing for what is it called the h factor or something yep yeah h index h index right um so you know depending on who you are in academia, you love or you hate the H index. Um, I'd say I can gain the shit out of it. It's pretty yeah. easy. You just build enough, a build up a wide, widest net of circle jerks who self cite each other. So it doesn't appear like self citation. Right. Um, so there's H index, which only works for peer reviewed journals. You know, a lot of it's driven by Google Scholar. Really. Well, yeah, although, I mean, Google Scholar is more um, inclusive than like your Thompson ranking. So the H index usually applies to an individual. Right. Uh, and then impact factor usually applies to the journal or conference right. publication, right? And that's that, that quality, that impact factor is like translated into a quality measure that tenure and promotion committees use to determine if all of your papers and academic scholarly products are valuable. So if you don't have publications in high impact factor journals, your 30 publications are less valuable than someone whose 30 publications are in nature. <laughs> right. 
So I, I do. I think I do think this is a this is an important composite metric, and I think it's a it's a metric that would probably be pretty accepted. I think it's. I think circles. it can be framed as non. I don't think it has to be framed as composite because effectively you're looking for. I think I think filters ultimately they're measuring the same thing, but they're being filtered differently. Right. So the two two things. Each of those filters is probably a metric that needs to be defined. Uh, and then as far and then as far as the impact so, factor goes, so historic. So I'm just going to say, compared to the composite metric hairballs that have emerged from this group historically, mm -hmm. this ain't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean. <laughs> When I, I mean, last July, I spent like a whole two days at the pool trying to edit a pull request on a composite metric that was really like 14 metrics. And I don't think that's what we're, uh, I don't think this is what we're creating. We're not creating that kind of Frankenstein here. No, I, I, I think this is, I think it's, this is a great composite metric. Okay. Uh, but that, but I do still believe that each of those filters is a metric that probably needs to be defined. Uh, uh, and, but, but I think that's, that's okay, number. right? I mean, that's a... So, so our, number of downloads, I think, is... The, it's defined. Number it's defined. of contributors is defined, defined. I guess. Yeah. Stars, i got to believe Stars. that's defined. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not defined. That's just an oversight, and evolution can week that out in 10 minutes at our next meeting. Yes. <laughs> <Got it>. number, <laughs> number of citations probably needs to be added to that filter. Yes. Uh, but then my... But then... But my further point was, so each of these metrics has some definition. They, so it need, they need to have some definition or they need to be defined. Uh, and as you said, a lot of them are probably already defined. So we, we should link to them uh, where they're defined in, in, our, in our other working groups. Uh, but the impact factor itself, is there some sort of calculation where, because the H index and the impact factor in academia is usually a number. Right. It's usually a. This is. Um, we're just giving you a number. It's an impact factor. Uh, so is there is there some way that we have of of calculating this and and giving a number, or is this just a, hey, look at impact factor. These things could give you some insight. So, where the where the interest in having this comes from is from people in academia in open source software and elsewhere saying, you know, there, I do lots of work that isn't considered worthy of consideration in my worth as a member of the university because it, there is no way to map it to um, you know, I've done the work, the work has impact, people are using my work all over the place, and yet it only counts if I manage to get through the hoops, to write an article about it, and then get that article accepted in the right journal. Otherwise, it's as if I've done nothing, right? And the answer is obvious that, well, you know, there are lots of different ways to figure out how things work outside of the journal articles. And why aren't we finding ways to give people credit for that work or to help people outside of their discipline understand the value and the impact of that work? So that's where the, the desire for such a metric is coming. That's, that's why I kind of got involved with chaos overall was yeah. that there's this... Small, small corner of the world that the only people who care about it are the people who are employed by it. There's this interest in doing better. This so, is such an interesting conversation. I, I hate so, to stop, but we are at the end of our time. Well, then yeah, just Sean, you can finish your thoughts and then we can alter end it time, up. alter the space time <laughs> continuum. I, I think I, my only, my only thought was, I, I think this metric is about how credit how like it's almost it is the h index 
in a sense, because I know I'm always allowed to indicate that software products are, are scholarly output. And what I, what I don't have is any accepted measure of how impactful those projects are. I mean, I've probably turned in 50 software products as can, you know, evidence of scholarly contribution and whatever the impact is, is it kind of is idiosyncratic to the organization and the department and the point in time that I am claiming that credit. And, and so if there was some, I don't want to say objective because that's a weighted loaded word, but if there's some indicator that project X, like for example, Augur is probably the most significant impact of any other than maybe the games for learning stuff. It's certainly the most, it's the project I've been technically the most close to for the longest in my career by several standard deviations. And so how do I show that, right? If I'm looking, using myself as a bad example, how do I indicate that this piece is different than these 14 li R libraries? <laughs> and so, you know, you see what I'm saying? Yep. And that's just, I guess, food for thought for next time. I'm sorry, folks. I got to take this. Yeah. And it's, Vinod is, and time, so. thank you, Vinod, for our, being our fearless leader. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. See you all. Bye, everyone. Bye.